Hello and welcome to Starside Chat, episode 42. The first one of 2020, is that right? Yes. Joining me is Aaron Capo. Hello. And we're back and we're going to be talking about the, our top games of 2020. I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, we're doing a top 10. Uh, each of us have compiled a list. I think they're going to be very different. I would venture to say that we might only share a few games, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm actually interested uh, to know what your top 10 list is. Uh, we've been talking about doing this for a few weeks. We got we had to put it off a little bit, but we're, we're going to do COVID. it now. Because of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Delays everything, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, we'll probably also talk about some stuff we're anticipating uh, coming out in 2021. Uh, I think that's all we've got on today's show. So let's let's get to it. Who wants to start? Should we flip you the coin? You should go first. What is your what is your tenth most liked game of 2020? My number ten is a game called Paradise Killer. I have no idea what that is. It's uh, it's on Steam and it's on uh, the Switch. It's a twenty dollar game, and it is this really interesting art style it's a uh, very vapor wave it looks like Ooh. something out of the 80s or early 90s there's some great like sort of synth wave music to it there's kind of a lot of saxophone to it mm. and you play this detective there's like a really interesting sort of lore to it that i am not like i haven't finished the game um i'm still working on it but it's like this open world game where you kind of get to explore and everywhere you go there's all this stuff to find and collect there's people to talk to and of course you're investigating a murder and so you're trying to uh talk to all the different people and and get their alibi figure out um who did it and you can also choose to hang out with those people and if you do that you will sort of build up your relationship and you may learn more about the case um, it's really interesting. There's no combat. It's all just like exploring this big open world and collecting evidence and trying to figure out who who did the murder. And it's in this like really interesting uh, style. And yeah, I'm just I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun just exploring and finding stuff. It kind of sounds like that. I never played it, but it kind of sounds like that Disco Elysium game people liked last year. Uh. This, well, so I should say, I guess this is a, a first-person game, okay. whereas uh, Disco Elysium is more of uh, isometric, and mm. also that's like an RPG. That's coming to Switch uh, in 2021, I believe. It is. Didn't that come out in 2019? I thought it was supposed to come out on Switch in 2020. Maybe it got pushed back. But. I think it got pushed back, and there's like a definitive edition. That's something I probably will pick up for Switch, because everyone uh, raved about it. Yeah, they did. I, I um, wanted to play it as well. Too. So wait, are, are you playing it on um, Switch or PC? I'm playing it on PC. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it does, I don't think it's an RPG. Like, you're not gaining skills so mm -hmm. much. It's just narrative? Yeah, it's very narrative-driven. Um, there's some, like, really interesting, quirky characters that you kind of want to be careful about your dialogue because you're like, well, if I sort of appease them, maybe they'll tell me more, but also, like... I don't want to trust them too much because maybe they're <laughs> lying to me, you know, like, so you kind of get to have these really interesting conversations. I don't know. I definitely think it's worth looking up if you haven't heard of it, because I, I think it's a lesser known game as well. Hmm. Yeah, I had not heard of it. I was definitely going to check that out. I think you would love the art style. I do love Vaporwave stuff. Me too. So tell me your number 10 game. A little game, you might not have heard of this, called... Animal Crossing. <laughs> I have now, heard of it. I didn't really play this game, um, but I put it on my top 10 because my girlfriend loved it. And it's like, I feel like the first game she's really clicked with, um, I mean, she played all the way through um, Mario Odyssey and really liked it. But I always was like there watching her. And this is the first game where she like actively would take the Switch away from me and start to play it. And she's logged like 200 hours in it or something. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, this is that game it. that came out and like everybody, especially because of the pandemic and the yeah. fact that everybody was like uh, staying home all the time, like the Switch sold out like crazy and nobody could buy them. But it was because everybody was buying Animal Crossing and mm -hmm. playing it for a crazy amount of time. But 
an ideal time for that to come out. But I, I, I get the appeal of it. I just have never really been into it. I mean, I created a character on her island, and I will log in and mess around every once in a while. But it's not really for me. But I just put yeah. it on there because uh, she liked it so much. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the only Animal Crossing thing that I have played is the mobile app, like on the oh, phone. Oh, yeah. Camp or whatever. Yeah, I've heard that is not like a great representation of the series, but I don't know. It did not appeal to me. And I've I like watched other people play it just because I, it was such a huge deal at the time and like everybody was playing it and talking about mm-hmm. it. But yeah, it didn't really appeal to me. So I, I didn't end up playing it. Hit me with that number nine, Zach. All right, so this one uh, I was back and forth on, but I ended up putting it on the list uh, just because I I did enjoy it a lot. It's Pumpkin Jack. Have you oh heard, yeah, heard you told games? me about that. It's like um, a platformer, right? Yeah, so it, it reminded me a lot of like old like N sixty four PS one era like third person action adventure platformers, and it has a unique art style it's very heavily inspired by like nightmare before christmas i think Mm -hmm. it's it's got that whole uh like jack skellington is the pumpkin king this is pumpkin jack who's sort of like i don't know the pumpkin king or whatever (laughs) uh and also there's like a scene where it's you go to this like wintry area and there's like a a santa character that you have to sort of battle a little bit um it, that, I guess that's more of a puzzle and not like a boss battle or anything, but still, like, the, the reference is pretty clear. Um, and I, I've always loved, like, those Tim Burton movies, so the fact that this is, like, leaning into that style a lot really appealed to me. Um, also, it came out around Halloween, which w- it was just sort of fun to, like, have something themed to uh, that holiday lit to play during the holiday. So I think after you told me about it, I watched a trailer for it, and it did look like something that is super fun to play. It's on Switch, right? Yeah, I played it on Switch. It's on Steam as well. I think those are the only two platforms. But yeah, it is it is a lot of fun. It, it's a very simple game. I think it was made by like one person. I will say, like I debated whether I wanted this game or Assassin's Creed Valhalla on my list. And uh, the two are not comparable in any way other than <laughs> that I put about the same amount of time into the two. Oh, really? Like, but I, wait, isn't uh, Captain Jack, Pumpkin Jack, isn't that a super short game? Yeah, exactly. So my, uh-huh. my point is I played maybe, so Pumpkin Jack is probably about a six to eight hour game which is about as much time as I put into Assassin's Creed Valhalla. (laughs) And that, I've barely scratched the surface of that game. So, like, it's hard to say definitively how I feel about that game, which is why I ended up leaving it off my list. Whereas six to eight hours of Pumpkin Jack, you've you've got the whole picture. So you, you know how you feel about it. So that's why I ended up picking this game. Uh, and yeah, I think it's it deserves to be recognized just because it's quirky and fun, and it's not gonna win like the best technical game of the year or graphics or anything like that. But I just enjoyed it a lot. So, hmm. man, now I gotta check it out. It's like it's probably pretty cheap right now on uh, Switch, right? Yeah, I know it was on sale when it initially came out. That's when I got it, and then the price went up to I think. I want to say 25 bucks don't quote something. me on that <laughs> it's somewhere in there uh what is your number eight so uh, my number no my number nine. Oh yeah yeah my number 10 i didn't really play and my number nine i didn't play at all because i could not play it but i did watch someone play it i watched a full playthrough on youtube half-life alex really i don't have a valve index or any sort of uh current version of virtual reality but i am very very into virtual reality and i'm also very into half-life and like the lore of half-life and so i didn't want to drop like a thousand dollars on a new computer and a headset but i did really really i was very interested in the story and just like the gameplay of like a triple a vr game made by valve and so I watched a guy on YouTube play all the way through, a guy that I watch on Twitch a lot, and I was uh, enraptured by it. Uh, it seems like a very, very cool game. If I had uh, an index, I would definitely play it, but unfortunately I do not. 
but I felt like I should put it on the list because I got a lot of enjoyment out of it. I probably spent like 20 hours watching him play it. I don't think it's that long of a game, but he went back and did some like modding of it and stuff. But uh, I felt like I played, I mean, I guess I, I didn't get immersed in it, but um, it's something I gained a lot of enjoyment about. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about the game. Uh, I know you're like super into Half-Life and also VR, so like I knew this would be a thing that would appeal to you, but <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Not something I have played or probably will play. That's what I was talking to my brother about it, and I was like, man, this guy did a great playthrough of it. He's like, well, I, someday I hope to, I'm going to eventually have VR and I'm going to play it. And I think I probably will someday play it as well, but uh, I couldn't wait. I, I knew that was going to be far away in the future, so I, I, I popped the tab on it and I, <laughs> I watched it. It was great. Cool. But yeah. Hit me with that number eight, Zach. Number eight is Doom Eternal. Zach, that is my number eight. Is it really? Oh, we, wow. We matched up. What if it's the same for the rest of them? But yeah. <laughs> We're very in sync. Uh, no, I I don't know about you, but there was a time where I forgot that this was a 2020 game just because yeah. it like it was such a long year and it came out so early on in the year. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I think Doom has some of the best feeling like shooting in video games. Like oh it, yeah, for sure. Like the excellent play. pacing too. Like yeah. I would sit down and play one level, and it would take me like maybe forty minutes to an hour, and then I would be good. I could just like stand up and walk away and be like, man, that was a that was a great hour of my life. Yeah, and it's it just it's so satisfying that combination of like gunplay and music and mm-hmm. just like the movement and all the different mechanics that you have at your disposal like jumping you have double jump and dash and um like you have a melee and all your different weapons and like when you watch somebody who's like really good at doom play the game and they're just like hot swapping back and forth between like their last couple of weapons and like so they're not even waiting on reloads and they're just like super efficiently taking everything down like one, I can't quite get to that level, but also just, like, it makes you feel like you can a little bit, just because, I don't know. It's it's hard to explain, because it's also, when you think, like, best shooter mechanics, you typically go to something like Call of Duty or Destiny, because there's, mm-hmm. like, ADS. Those are, like, more modern-style shooters. Mm-hmm. Um, Doom somehow is, like, a retro-style shooter that also feels super modern and like maybe as good as if not better than a lot of the other modern shooters so i agree entirely yeah plus uh i thought they did some interesting things in doom eternal in terms of like they kind of go into the slayer's background uh and yeah and it's legitimately funny at parts as well like i laughed multiple times while i was playing it yeah so i think i liked it better than the first one or the last one hmm where would you rank it there? That is a good question. Because um, I'm not gonna lie, I fell off of what was it, Doom 2016. I yeah, never, I never ended up finishing it, but I did finish Doom Eternal and liked it the whole way through. I think you're right. Um, yeah, I think this is a better game. Although, I mean, there's something so pure about the first one, or not the first one, but the 2016 one. But yeah, I think they have added so many things in this one that it's impossible not to say that it's better. Yeah. So I guess that means I'm moving to my number seven pick then. Yeah. All right. A little game called Star Renegades. Ah, I remember you telling me about this. Yeah, I watched, uh, I think we watched a trailer for it together, but I never got into it. Yeah, so I'm not normally into roguelike games. Like We've talked about that multiple times on this show, but I like a good turn-based combat system. I also like the the pixel art style, and I like the the music in it. It's it's one of those roguelikes that tries to make you feel rewarded for like taking on a run, and even though you fail and you have to start over again, you'll unlock a different character. And since you have like a party of, I think you start out with a party of three, and you can eventually have like four or five characters with you at, at a time. Um, and so just sort of like working on building out a team composition that like works well together is interesting and like the more characters you unlock and the more 
you you get other things as well i forget what all you get it's been a while since i played it but you get you can unlock different types of gear that you can have sort of spawn for you in the world as you're going through it and that'll help you so there, there are some things there and the story is pretty simple there's like an alien invasion it's a little bit um what was that movie with tom cruise oh uh edge of tomorrow yeah well it's it's kind of like that but instead of like you dying and uh waking up again <laughs> you die but this robot will go to like a it's like a multiverse it'll go to a different universe and find the same people and work with them and they're all also dealing with the alien invasion because this is all happening on in every universe basically mm-hmm. and so that's how it kind of even though your characters died okay that universe has failed to push back the alien invaders so we'll try go into a different universe and see if we can get people there to do it so it's it, it works and i don't know i just the what they did with the turn-based system i think it's one of the best that i've played i really love how they have like the timing bar up at the top of the screen and you can very clearly see where each character is going to get their turn and certain characters have abilities to if they hit somebody before they've had their turn it will push them further back on that timing bar and so you can kind of really strategize how you go about attacking that system is very interesting and i loved the way it worked and so it kept me coming back i kept trying to you know find a better team composition and sort of develop some of the relationships with the characters which you kind of do a little bit i think it's not it's certainly not as nuanced as another game that we're going to talk about here in a little bit (laughs) um but i thought it was interesting and the art style i remember being really cool as well yeah it's very very good i know you're partial to pixel art as well so so yeah it it's definitely got a unique look that you should look up if you have not seen this game at all but yeah i i loved it tell me about your number seven zach i think this is probably higher up on the list for you but uh yakuza like a dragon Ooh, yeah we may talk about that more in a little bit (laughs) um i have not finished it uh i took a break when other games come out but i there was a period of time where i would play this game for like three hours a day every day and just like grind stuff like just do side missions and explore and not even do main quest missions but i love it i love the setting of it the story i i am not super in love with the combat because i want the like more of like a tactical ability to move people around Uh, i think it's lacking in that like uh too much of chance in it random number generation rather but yeah um, that was my problem with it as well like i i love uh, the story and characters, but the combat felt not as great to me. Because like we were just talking, or I was just saying in Star Renegades, where it very clearly identifies like mm-hmm. the order of turns and like you know where all the characters are positioned. The the turn based combat in Yakuza is kind of random because the characters like are moving word. about. They're moving about in the space at random, and so. Uh, one of the problems you encounter is there's like a it does the Super Mario RPG style thing of when you queue up an attack you'll see the animation and if you do a button press at the right time you'll get like more damage out of it or, or when you're being attacked if you time a button press right you'll get more defense mm-hmm. um, so you'll take less damage but the problem with that is because the characters are all moving around at random and the camera's like dynamically trying to pan around and keep track of all the action, what'll happen is you'll have your character attack somebody and then the camera will like whip around to the right at, to try to zoom in on yeah. the next person who's attacking your character. And you're like, there's no way I can time a button press while the camera's like searching around trying to find <laughs> who's attacking next. like. So it doesn't, the combat is certainly not one of the strong suits of You also, you get benefits from, like, when someone's knocked down, like, focusing on that person. Yeah, yeah. But if all of your people are displayed around erratically, uh, they could still, like, some person might be super far away, or they might have to run by a couple of people, in which case they're just going to, like, get, like, tripped, basically. Yeah. 
which is not great. And I, I want the ability to like manage where they are on the field, which um, maybe makes the combat too complicated. But I feel like I there's so many situations where there's one like big heavy that I'm trying to take down, and I can't focus on them because everybody is just like <laughs> wandering around in front of a bunch of mics. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, you'll have a character that has, like, an area of effect attack that could de deal damage to multiple people. Yeah. But because they're moving around at random, they may enter or exit your area of effect when you try to do your attack. And so you may end up not actually getting the benefit of area of effect attack, and you just end up hitting one person. You're like, well, that didn't work out. I also wish that I could pick the order that my team attacked in, because oftentimes... Like, my person with the area of effect attack is, like, the second or third person that I get to use. And by that time, the clump of enemies that were just, like, walking by have all spread yeah. out. Uh, which is not great for me. Yeah, and it would be nice, like uh, like I said, to have, like, a either a timing bar so you knew where everybody was going to attack on the timeline. Mm -hmm. Or that they each had, like, a, a turn meter somewhere displayed so that you knew who was going to get to attack next. Uh, and then like a turn or two after that as well so that you could be like okay my character with the aoe attack is like third so i'm going to use my first character to boost attack up on everybody or whatever um, but you can't really make those decisions very well because you don't really know the order that everybody's going to be attacking yeah but it's still a good game uh, and I enjoyed it. Someday I hope to pick it back up, uh, but today is not that day. Zach, <laughs> what is your number, whatever we're on? Seven? Six. Six. I suspect this game might be higher on your list, but my number six is Hades. Really? Very low. Yeah, lower than most. Uh, like I said, I'm not a huge roguelike person, so I have like fallen off of this game. Uh, but I, I played a lot more of it than I have any other roguelike. Yeah. Um, and I it's, It sucks you in with that loop. Yeah, I think and the big reason is because of how good it is at making you feel rewarded. Every time you make a, a run, you're just as excited to get back to like the main hub where everybody is to, to talk to because there's so much going on there as well. So it, it does something that I, most roguelikes don't do and that's like tell an interesting story with interesting characters mm. where being in the main hub where you can talk to everybody is everybody's interesting if not more interesting than like doing the combat and I mean the combat itself is very good as well so it's not like that's a, a downside and you're just hoping to get back to have more conversations but um yeah, I, I enjoy the different weapons, I enjoy the combat, but there's so much going on with like the characters and all of that that, I don't know, I really, really did enjoy it a lot. Um, it's just not the type of game that I will probably spend 100 hours playing, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, I, um, I so I did, the, I beat it, but you know, when you beat it, you don't really beat it. Right. But I, I basically completed a run, and then I probably completed like maybe five or six more runs and then i just kind of fell off of it but i know that i need to keep doing it to progress the story i just other things came out but it was great to just sit down and like bang out a run and then feel really accomplished at the end of it and like spend all my points did you get it on switch i, I did I'm, i've been playing it on switch or i did play it on switch but it has cross save with pc which is cool but i have not taken advantage of that would you have to you'd have to buy it again on steam You'd have to buy it again on Steam, but you wouldn't lose any of your progress, and you could play with keyboard and mouse. Although don't, I'm not sure that I would enjoy that. I yeah, think I was it would be say, better with controller. I was going to say, it seems like the type of game that I would rather play with a controller, but... I don't know. I mean, definitely, like, the bow, maybe, like, the projectile weapons would be better with mouse and keyboard, but I don't know. I think Switch is definitely the place to be for Hades. I think so, too. Especially since, like, you can just, like, do a run uh, in, like, 20 minutes on your Switch and then just put it in rest yeah. mode and walk away again, and then... You know, I, every game is ideal for the Switch, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> is what I'm saying. But uh, um, no, if you're a fan of Greek mythology, for sure, you need to play Hades. A good year for you. Yes. Because uh, what else came out? I feel like, um, what was that Ubisoft game? Uh, oh, yeah. The, Immortals Phoenix Rising. Yeah. Also very Greek inspired. 
neither of us played that game, so it's not going to be on this list. Spoilers. <laughs> well, my next game, this might be higher up on the list for you, but uh, I put it here because I am still undecided on it. I very much like it, but I haven't beaten it. And it's uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Ooh, lower than I thought it would be on your list. Yeah, you know, I in looking, I tried to gauge like how how much enjoyment I got out of something, but also like um, how much time you put into amount, it. <laughs> exactly, the amount of time I put into it, and just like the way it made me feel. And I I, I really am enjoying Cyberpunk 77, 2077, but I I feel like I still have barely scratched the surface of it because I'm just wandering around doing side quests and like not really doing the main mission, so I can't speak to the story elements of it. I I did Um, that for a while too. I got to a point where I was like, am I enjoying this? Because I I started getting bored of it because all I was doing, like I convinced myself that I'm going to go around, I'm going to complete all these side quests. I'm just going to, I'm not even going to look at my journal. I'm just going to open the the map and be like, okay, here's a a side quest. I'm going to go to this and do this. But I got bored of that fairly quickly. And I think you do have to not do that. It's, it's kind of like what everybody said when uh, Dragon Age Inquisition came out, mm-hmm. uh, and they were like, "You have to leave the hinterlands, which is the like open the first area you go to, um, because you'll get like bogged down just like trying to do all the side quests that pop up in that area, and you'll just burn out because it's not it's not designed for that. Like it's you need to like do these every now and then as like a supplement." like you need to focus on the main story and i think like once i started doing that with cyberpunk once i like started doing some of the meteor side quests and some of the like main storyline quests i like really got into it i have like just this morning i was playing a little bit of it uh and i had started doing main storyline and they are it's crazy how vastly different like the main story is from side gigs and other random things you run into you I feel like you forget if you're just running running around doing like, well, there's a bunch of bad guys here, and you got to find a specific one of them and loot his body, mm-hmm. or like, oh, here's an area where there might be a cyber psycho. Check that out. Whereas, like, if you do one of the main missions, there is like much higher production value, and you're talking to people, and new interesting things are happening. I'm excited to play more of it, and I'm excited to do more story. I was trying to like up my stats before I moved any forward, but yeah. I think you're right. I think the what the way to do it is to. So, how far are you in it? I have not completed Act 2 because I did spend a long time just doing a lot of the, like, gigs and side missions. Yep, yeah. Um, so I have not... I, I'm all, I'm trying to avoid main quest line, but I've played enough of it where, like, some of the characters you meet in the main quest line will eventually have their own set of, like, side quests to go through. Mm-hmm. And they're pretty meaty. Like, I got to the point where I was pretty impressed with those to the point where... It almost felt like these could be like main storyline in a different game. Like (laughs) you do missions for Judy, you do missions with Pan Am and you do missions with um, this uh, detective guy or I guess he's like a former cop named River. Ooh, I just I think I just learned about that guy and I'm about to go meet him. Yeah. And you you do missions uh, sort of for Johnny Silverhand. Um, that sort of delve into his background and some of the people he used to run with back in the day. And all of that stuff is super interesting to me to the point where like, I don't mind that I'm not doing the main quest line. Mm -hmm. I'm just like enjoying seeing where those quest lines are going. So I like, I think it got um, dinged a little bit from some people for being like, well, you have like, these side quests that are just go here and kill these people and then you're done and i'm like well now i'm learning that those are clearly marked differently like they're Mm -hmm. they're gigs those aren't the side quests they the side quests they actually have there's a good number of those that actually are like these things that keep going where like you think you'll have wrapped up uh somebody's story and their side quest and then they'll come back like a couple hours later and you'll have more to do for them and it just sort of keeps going. And so they are a lot more meaty than maybe people have given them credit for. Also, there's a lot of like interesting stuff that happens. Like, did you find Skippy the Smart Pistol? Yes. So, yeah, after I saw your video, I did. Uh, there's also a side quest where you meet a guy that has like a grenade for a nose. And I've seen pictures of him, but I haven't run into him yet. Yeah, that was funny. And then like, I also talked to a talking vending machine that 
I think if I went back to that area, he might have more to say to me, but that <laughs> that felt like a reference to Red Dwarf because there's a, a point in the conversation where like V is trying to get him to sort of break his programming and say something mean instead of just always being nice and complimentary. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a side quest that ended with like an office reference. There's a lot of like pop culture references in cyberpunk. Yeah, some of them, I guess the only one that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth was that portal one. Oh, yeah. That was just like, I feel like they just took direct lines from the game <laughs> and dropped them in. And I was it's, like, it's the same what? voice actress, too. Why is this happening? <laughs> like, it's it really is the same voice actress. It's, some it of was them, crazy when I started hearing some that. Some of them are definitely, yeah, a little too on the nose, but I don't know. I, I kind of like when games will openly reference other bits of pop culture like yakuza yeah, does yeah, it I'm as well that. where they directly reference um dragon quest yeah so well what's your uh, number five we're at the halfway point halfway there my number five is watchdogs legion i never played this and i really wanted to uh what's uh you liked it i think yeah i think i've definitely got it higher than most people i think this ended up not making a lot of people's list just because it, it's flawed it's a flawed game <laughs> and i i understand that but i also had so much fun just like um like you hack a cargo drone and fly around uh this like fairly realistic representation of london i like when games make like real world cities like their location <laughs> like I'm not, why do you say it's flawed I, it's flawed because the whole point is you're trying to get all these people anyone on the the street can be um one of your characters that you can play as you can sort of recruit everyone um and i guess in that way it's more satisfying than cyberpunk where like just the random people on the street don't do anything like the the city living city aspect of that game is not that great when we thought it would be but it's not um, Watch Dogs Legion, any random citizen can be recruited and then you can play as them. Um, but that also means that during the story, like each cutscene that's trying to build on the last one to tell a story, it, there's just this random new person there <laughs> that <laughs> was not a part of the things that happened previously and may not be there again next time. Like, it's hard for those to sort of line up together and sort of build to anything cohesive when you don't did you really play have with, a main uh, character. Did you play with permadeath on? Yes, I did. Did any of your characters die and you were super bummed out about it? Yeah, so that, I know like a lot of people were saying it needed a main character to make the story work. But I I ended up liking my the people I did play at so that when they ended up dying, I did feel bummed about it because like I would find a character that had like a cool ability set. Like I had a bunch of spies that had like they could summon uh like 007 style Aston Martin and Ooh. they had like a silenced pistol and they had a watch that could like hack people. And so I would be like, it started feeling like a James Bond game. Like I would sneak around and silence, you know, takedowns. And then I would complete my objective. And then eventually you start getting into these more like combat focused missions. And like, obviously a one pistol is not quite as good as having like an assault rifle. And so I would lose my spy and I would be like, man, I wanted that to be the character that I played through this entire game with. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't know, you, you end up liking the voice actor or the personality that the character has uh, and their ability set. So when you lose somebody, you do eventually start to get bummed out by it. Uh, and it makes you play the game completely differently, where you're going to be maybe a little more careful. Mm. And I think the way the game wants you to play is, okay, we have some missions where you have to infiltrate like a police station so i'm gonna recruit a policeman so that he has that outfit he can walk in there and not be noticed same with like a hospital or like a construction site and so you want to have sort of pokemon style you want to have like (laughs) one of everyone so you you have all the bases covered but at the end of the day it didn't really matter i just wanted the person that had the big assault rifle 
so that I could always, you know, stand a chance of surviving like big shootouts. And so like some of that stuff works and some of it doesn't. And I think they need to sort of iterate and Mm. sort of refine all of those mechanics and the way they sort of implement the play as everyone. I'm sure they will. I'm excited to see what the next one is going to be. Yeah, so I I also think that they need to make this like their exclusive feature, the thing that is Watch Dogs. You know, it's not just hacking anymore. Now it's play as anyone permadeath. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. I wonder, I feel like there's a 50-50 chance. Maybe I'm, not, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I could see the next one being another main character. I could see it also being this uh, new innovative feature again. I feel like I would be super bummed out if the next one didn't have this but i did have a crazy amount of fun just like running around and causing havoc in this game it's one of those open world games where just like being in the world and running around doing crazy stuff is as much fun and maybe more fun than actually playing through the story yeah i remember really enjoying just like wandering around and getting up to nonsense in Watch Dogs 2 yeah so i think that's where it's strongest and that's why it deserves a spot on the list not because of its main storyline so tell me about your number five vastly different from your number five I don't even know if it's on your list, but I had a lot of fun with it, and I basically 100%ed it, except I think there was a glitch that allowed me to not get 100%. A Short Hike. I have not played that. It came out on uh, Steam, and I, it looked really good, but I knew one day it would come out for Switch, and it did. And, uh, man, it was a lot of fun. It's like a little bit Breath of the Wild-y, a little bit Animal Crossing-y, but you basically are... It's a very short game, but you're on this island. It's like almost N64 level of graphics, and you're just going around and you're a little bird and you can fly uh and you can only fly like the amount of golden feathers that you have so you're basically going around and doing all these tasks to get a stamina meter uh which allows you to fly and climb by collecting golden feathers uh and eventually you get your the whole point is to get to the, the peak of this mountain and eventually you get enough feathers to do that but there's still a ton of stuff to do and they added like a boat in the Switch version that you can play around on. Uh, but I, 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 I wish it was a full length game of just that. I mean, it is a full game, but it's only like maybe, I probably put maybe four hours into it, maybe less than that. But uh, I loved it. The aesthetic is beautiful. The music is great. Um, it's very, very satisfying to max out your feathers. Um, it's something I think everybody should play. It's a very, very fun little game. Was the art style cool? Very cool. It's like um, it's it's like a it's like an N sixty four game kind of, where it's like low poly, almost like you're looking at it on a, a CRT. Like um, oh, interesting. It's uh, it's very, very cool, and it's all like the island is basically a big circle, and you're so you're kind of like wrapping around. It takes a while to get your bearings and figure out exactly where you are on the island, but. Uh, once you do it enough, because there's like a lot of races where you're, it's like, hey, race me to the lighthouse. And I, it was too early in the game. So I was like, I have no idea where the lighthouse is, <laughs> but it's a very, very cool game. And I hope, I don't know what the developer is going to do next, but I would love for just like more of that. But uh, who can say it might just be lightning in a bottle. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about it, but I haven't really looked too far into it. What is uh, your number four, Zach? We're getting down to it. Number four, we already talked about it, Cyberpunk 2077. I think it's a flawed game, and most of the flaws have to do with its performance. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've had much in the way of bugs. I know you've been playing it on Stadia. and Some. I've had some bugs. I had to restart one Cyber Psycho mission because when I killed the Cyber Psycho she fell into some stairs and so I couldn't loot her body because she just like fell through the world. Huh. But uh, that's probably the only game breaking one I've run into. Uh, So I've been playing it on PC and the issue I have is like if I run or drive like a few blocks from my initial position, like eventually everybody just turns into blobs. Like (laughs) all the people and all the vehicles are textureless blobs and uh sometimes different items in the world just like gates and different stuff that's on like the sidewalks will just not populate for a solid like 10 seconds 
Uh, and that does take you out of the experience after a while, but... A year from now, I'm sure it'll, it's going to be an insanely different game that's yeah. like super optimized and great and we'll have some DLC, but we're still in the early days of everything was too rushed. Yeah. But, I mean, otherwise, like we talked about, it, I'm really enjoying the side quests and the characters, and I'm interested to see how the main story wraps up. I know, like, it's it has that problem that you always talk about with Mass Effect 3, and, like, it's pretty common in this type of game where, like, the main quest line is this thing that you would be like, if I was role-playing this, my main character would not waste any time doing anything yeah. else. <laughs> They would have to focus solely on this main quest line. Um, but, I don't know. I think we've dealt with that enough in these games that you just kind of go, eh, whatever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the game and try to level my character and just uh, put that out of mind as much as possible. And, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah like I said, the, the side quests in the game I'm really enjoying. And I want to know where those are going as much as I want to know where the main storyline is going. And when I'm not having issues with textures not loading in, the city is actually really gorgeous to look at. And it is, for sure. I finished a mission and it was raining and I hadn't seen that yet before. And so I just like wandered around looking at stuff in the rain and it was beautiful. Yeah, I've done that too where like I'll just be like, man, this area is so cool looking that I, instead of running, I'll even just like walk around and just like I'm looking up and looking at all the mm -hmm. everything in the world and it just looks so cool. It, it could be one of those games where I spend as much time just like looking at the scenery as I do actually playing the game. But I've posted some, some uh, pictures on Instagram of uh, I saw yeah of the world I, I've taken more but yeah I don't know at some point I'll get back to playing the game itself <laughs> um <laughs> so that's my number four what's your number four I wonder if this is on your list uh my number four is the Final Fantasy 7 remake really I thought it would be higher on your list uh I had other things I think that I <laughs> enjoyed I mean I, I played through this uh, and beat it, and I really enjoyed a lot of it. Um, the music was insanely good, the music and is I would so just good. wander <laughs> around. Uh, it's like I think it was, I want to say like Aerith's main area. Uh, I would just like wander around that place and listen to the music. Yeah, but, it was very um, good. It's so good, and I I enjoyed the combat a lot. I uh, I don't have a ton of bad things to say about it actually. Um, I wish. It was the full Final Fantasy VII experience, but I guess we'll have to wait for that. Yeah, that's probably um, the biggest knock on it, honestly, is like, uh, especially with the ending, where yeah, it, it feels like a lot of things happen that, especially for someone like me who hasn't played other Final Fantasy games and hasn't played the original Final Fantasy mm -hmm. VII, um, you just have no context for a lot of what's happening and you're just like well i don't even it's true yeah i mean i definitely i hadn't played it since college and i played through all of it with my girlfriend prior to the remake coming out and they, it is crazy how much like there are seeds of things to come just, like sprinkled throughout yeah. but uh and, and to a certain extent like i to me it didn't bother me as much as it bothered a, a lot of other people but because to me i was just like well you know this is part one like i'm sure that this will make sense in time so i kind of accepted it for what it was in the same way mm. that like you get to the end of the first lord of the rings movie and you're like wait they didn't wrap up this story at all so i i didn't <laughs> get to the it, i wasn't like that but uh there was a lot of stuff that i'm like i might need to like play the next game or two and then watch mm. a replay of this game just to be like oh that's what that was you know <laughs> Um, what's your number four? Or three? My number three is Yakuza Like a Dragon. Oh. Uh, so I enjoy the characters and the story so much. Like, we already, How far did we you already talked about the problems that we've had with the combat, but, like, I think the story and characters are making up for it for me in a, a big way to the point where I don't really care as much. Also, I think the combat is growing on me a little bit. Like, I'm... Because as you you continue to play you unlock you can get more characters and you can unlock other classes for them to play and 
So the combat does get a little bit more interesting because you can start to strategize. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use this character's this one ability that can stun somebody, and I can use this ability that will like make somebody not able to attack. And then you can kind of okay, I'm going to take out make these two people not be able to attack and then I can focus on these other characters. And so you can kind of strategize a little bit more than you can at the beginning of the game when you have none of those abilities. I think I made it a little bit further than you. I, I am still playing it. I, I've been switching back and forth between uh, Cyberpunk and Yakuza. And I, I think I'm in chapter 10 or 11. Which is beyond the point. So I think last time we did a podcast, you talked about how you were at the point where Namba had left the party. Yes, he. The part that um, I hit a wall at was you. You realize he's he's hiding out at Bleach headquarters, um, and so you go there, and then you have to fight that guy that basically set you up that time. And I found that boss fight to be impenetrable, uh, such that I probably will have to go back and level up before I can beat him. So you haven't done the uh, Wrecking Ball fight, have you? No. Okay, so you're not even that far. All right. I definitely have struggled with the combat at times, but I I think I have enough characters that have different healing abilities that mm. uh, I was able to get through all of that stuff on my first try, which is maybe a tip, like, use... Uh, classes that have like healing abilities what are your classes like uh i am i left the main guy as hero yeah and then non was a chef oh i i left him as the homeless guy maybe i should turn back to that i made the police officer a uh whatever the thing is that has a giant hammer i think construction worker is and that what that is? I, I had him on that class for a while as well, but I don't think it was a construction worker. I thought he was like a bouncer or something like that. Yeah. But I, I did. Uh, I eventually switched him to whatever the class is where you can have a guitar, because that's more of a support oh. style class. And so you can, like, the first thing you do with him, your very first move, is this, like, heal over time thing for everybody. Ooh. I should do that. And then... What do you have for Sachan? I made her the dominatrix. Is that which one is that? Night woman or like night lady? No, like what's your uh, weapon? A whip. Okay, that's not what I'm using. I'm using the one with the <laughs> microphone. I think it's a host. Oh yeah, she's like a host. Yeah, or like an idol maybe. Yeah, she can heal everybody with that class. And her main attack or like her first special ability is an attack that can. I forget what the term is they use, but it, it makes them not able to attack. Like, or, or at least there's a chance if the effect is active. Yeah. Sorry, there are people moving in, and it's very noisy right now. <laughs> I can't hear anything. Okay. Well. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I, I've used that class for her, and then another tip: if you get through that section, actually, is Nambo with your party right now? No. Okay. So the other thing I did, and you may have to get through that section before you can do it is I played the the very next thing I did is I went to the business management mini game and, yeah where you're like making cookies and no the where you um what is that Ichiban confections I guess you're making yeah. cookies but <laughs> uh, if you play enough of that to the point where you get your business within the top 100 of businesses the woman who owns the place, Aerie, you can add her to your party. So, oh, really? So then you, yeah, so then you'll have four characters again, which makes the next couple of battles that you have to take on easier because you have a fourth person, whereas if you didn't recruit her, you would just have the three people. Interesting. So definitely do that because you're going to want four people, especially when you get to the point where you have to battle a, a wrecking ball. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. It is. And the side quests, like we talked about this briefly, I think on the last show, where the the side quests in this game, like they keep going. And there's a lot to yeah. them. They're not just like simple one-off things. And the characters you meet in those side quests are so likable. And um, I, I, the writing 
in the game is just very, very good. It's some of the best writing in a game that I have played in a long time. I want to finish the story out, and so I will someday keep playing it, but I'll have to Well, wait so because I, I started playing ones. Cyberpunk, I was worried that I was going to fall off of Yakuza and that I was going to just move completely over to Cyberpunk, and then I would just... it would take me a long time to finish cyberpunk and I would never go back to Yakuza again but I decided not to do that so I'm switching back and forth so that I can keep up with both of them and not fall off of either of them <laughs> but it's probably <laughs> going to take me longer to get through both of them doing it this way <laughs> yeah uh so tell me about your number three my number three is number two Zach it's last of us part two. Ooh, I did not play this game I played it uh, with my girlfriend, because she likes to watch me play those Naughty Dog games. Um, it's very cinematic. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and the ending I did not super like, but I actually, this week, was just like driving around thinking about it. And I realized that probably, almost certainly, there's going to be a third one. Uh, and I can see in my mind what the plot of it is going to be. And so I think that the second one had to end this way and so i'm a little more okay with it thinking of it as a second in a trilogy but i don't super want to get into specifics but um i i really i really liked it uh i at, there right when i beat it i wish that it had ended like a half an hour or an hour before and just like cut at basically the first kind of ending but um i get it i get why what happened happened and it was good. It was engaging the entire time, and uh, they did some very interesting time stuff. Uh, I was, uh, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I liked the first game, but I am so zombied out for one that like that type of sort of Walking Dead post-apocalyptic, like just dour, sad setting was not something mm. I was like. I can't wait to get back into that world. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, plus given like the year it came out in, I was like, I need something more uplifting than this. So I just, yeah. I just ended up not playing it at all. So. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a solid game. The mechanics, just like the game, the time, like the hour to hour gameplay is super, super fun. Uh, there was one section that was a bit of an open world section that I was not super into, but, um, the puzzles are cool. The graphics are insane for current generations. Yeah, it looks incredible just from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, I, I 100% am going to play the third one and whenever they reveal it, like four years from now or whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, what's your number three? Or two? My rather. number two, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Wow, higher up. Yeah, I, I can't believe that it's higher on my list than your list. I thought for sure yeah. uh, you would have it higher than me. But yeah, I love... The, the characters I love the I thought the graphics were great or maybe great for the main cast and a little bit average <laughs> for everybody else in the world but um what about Chadley Chadley yeah uh I didn't interact with that character much which is a shame because I now know that you have to yeah. do his little like arena fights in order to unlock more summons and I did not realize See, that as I was playing through the game that's the difference between you and me because right when I encountered that character I I picked up my phone and I googled like what's the deal with chat <laughs> uh and then it was like oh you should actually talk to this person I was like oh okay I will see because I just saw him I was like well I'm not gonna talk to Chadley if I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, the combat I I enjoyed, but I didn't love it. Um, I do think it was interesting the way. So it reminded me of Dragon Age Inquisition, where you can essentially swap to any character in your party if you want to, like, mm -hmm. you know, change a pace. I've been fighting as Cloud for a while. Now I want to you know, play as Barrett and have a gun. A great combat system. Yeah, and it was very cool the way that you can sort of manipulate that to your advantage by building up your ATB and then swapping to a different character or, you know, or let them, the the AI sort of build up your ATB and then swap around to use all the special abilities, you know, throughout the course of combat. Uh, but I found some of the boss fights extremely long and drawn out and 
yes. occasionally very frustrating to the point where I, I eventually switched it down to easy to get through. Uh, I think it was the Airbuster one. I switched it to easy for there's a fight. I, it's some giant robot and you don't have cloud. It's at the very end of the game in Shinra Tower where you get separated. And I could not beat it. I played it like two times and it was just a very, very long fight. There's like a cannon that constantly is being shot at you, some sort of laser cannon. And I had to switch to easy because it was just like too much for me. Yeah. And so I think for that <laughs> that reason, it knocked it down a little bit on my list. That and what we talked about, about just not always having context for what was happening and being a little bit confused by the ending. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I loved the world, loved being in the, that space, loved all the characters. There, The writing for those characters was good for the most part, and then occasionally you would have Barrett that would be really over the top <laughs> uh, in kind of a funny way. But uh, this has made me want to go back and play the original. I'll say that much. It's on Switch, and they've added a bunch of quality of life things. Really? Yeah, like you can play it three times speed, and you can also set it so that everyone constantly has their limit breaks. Uh, so, like, combat flies by, and when you're running around, you can also turn off random encounters. Um, so you can just, like, hammer Ooh. through that game and just do story beats and interesting fights and not have to deal with... Uh, just like running into a bunch of cacti that you have to fight every once in a while. <laughs> I think they did the same thing for Final Fantasy VIII as well. Interesting. So it's on Switch uh, for how much? Probably very cheap. I, I I can't say. I think when I bought it, it was maybe like $15, maybe less than that. Maybe like $7.99. Well, I'm definitely going to do that then. It's very good. It's I would recommend like using all those features. For sure. If, if I do end up playing it, I'm definitely going to get it on Switch and use all of those features to make <laughs> it faster and simpler to get through. Because it sounds like a very long game as well. Yes. Well, yeah, it, yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, hit me with that number two, Zach. That was number two. Did you give me your number two? Oh, that, what? I did. That my number. Oh, yeah, my number two is Hades, which we already talked okay. about. Okay, gotcha. What's your number one? My number one is Ghost of Tsushima. Ah, another game I have wanted to play, but I never picked up. I chose uh, Last of Us Part Two to play over the week, over the summer, and I never picked up Ghost of Tsushima, but I always wanted to. Yeah, I did not play uh, Last of Us Part Two because I knew Ghost of Tsushima was coming shortly after, and I was more, this seemed more up my alley. And uh, it's great. I love the aesthetic of it. I think it's a beautiful game to look at. Just like when you're riding around on your horse and you have like the crazy, uh, you know, particle effects and the leaves and uh, you have the, the grass swaying all over the place and like the minimal HUD that is mostly like you're guided by wind, like all of that is great and i i love the the combat as well i love the different like sword stances that you have and that's how you kind of like switching between those is how you deal with different enemy types and, and to the point where i found assassin's creed valhalla's combat pretty underwhelming after having played ghost of tsushima um and i love the fact that it's like a, an old samurai story that uh, like because i'm a fan of old kurosawa films and the fact that there's an actual like kurosawa mode for this game like i loved <laughs> that as well and um yeah it, it's a little bit that ubisoft style open world in that you have these like enemy encampments to go clear out so it it felt kind of like that. i love that that sounds great to yeah me. i enjoyed that as well and the fact that like stealth is one of the ways you can choose to go about clearing those out was fun to me. Um, I thought there was a good variety of like combat mechanics between like the samurai style and the ghost style. And I enjoyed the story as well. I thought it was interesting because you kind of end up at odds with your family a little bit. And so just sort of like old tradition versus like newer techniques and things like that becomes like a, a major focal point of the story and I thought it was interesting how they did that and it sort of 
uh, manip- manipulated your feelings a little bit with because um, mm. the game does a good job of in the initial hours setting up um, your family and your sense of duty and honor towards your family and um, towards sort of your mentor character who becomes kind of a father figure to you and then how the story and what you know you have to do to beat the enemy kind of puts you at odds with your father figure and a lot of that relationship really was interesting and worked really well for me so i i really enjoyed the story and to to me the reason why it was number one over some of the other games was it was sort of the game that didn't feel like i loved it but there was like this one major flaw that i had to look past whereas i thought Mm. like cyberpunk loved it but there's a lot of bugs and performance issues um yakuza love it but don't love the combat uh final fantasy 7 remake love it but there's a lot of stuff i don't really get about that game (laughs) uh (laughs) ghost of tsushima just great all around Uh, and then they added like a free update that added new game plus and ghost of tsushima legends that cooperative mode that Mm -hmm. i really enjoyed and i would love to jump back into that and play more of it um i like a good uh cooperative like kind of survival mode and this is a really good one really interesting one had a lot of fun with it also i don't know if it's just the art style or just how good it looks but it's one of the those games that like as i was playing it, i was like now this feels like a next gen game at the tail end of the previous gen mm. you know what i mean it just looked yeah. and played so polished that I, was, I couldn't not be impressed with it the whole way through so <laughs> hit me with your number one zach you know i like to cheat a little bit when we do top tens and tops fives you are known for that unintentionally <laughs> my number one game of the year the thing i spent the most time playing ironically is dungeons and dragons the pen and paper game so not a video game no since august since like early august me and a group of my childhood friends every saturday have logged on the pandemic has helped with this because no one can go anywhere um but the four of us have logged on and i have not been the dungeon master for the first time ever uh, one of my friends is DMing, and I'm just playing as a character in his campaign. Uh, but we've been doing it every Saturday since early August. We've only missed like two or three weekends. Uh, and it's been great. It's made me really want to get that Baldur's Gate game when it comes out of early access, because that's basically Dungeons and Dragons. But uh, pen and paper RPGs, man, are, uh, are really great. And I think a lot of people are probably looking for things to do since they can't like leave their homes. And I would say that like uh virtual like um what is it the the website that we use that has really really streamlined everything is roll 20 which is free you can create a free account and you can get like it has all the dungeon dragons 5e stuff built into it so you can make characters and the dungeon master can control like the map that you see and there's just you can make buttons to click instead of rolling dice um and it's great it's and it's basically completely free um, you just need the source books, which you can find anywhere. But uh, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, pen and paper RPGs are great, and they're very fun to play on in person. But I think they're equally as fun to play um, online. I'm jealous because I would love to get into that kind of thing. Because the, the like one time that we got a chance to do that together with some friends that we worked with. I had a yeah. lot of fun with it. And it was a blast. I think it would be so much fun to do that more. I just don't know enough people that would be into that sort of thing to like. I'm telling you, man, we should try to rope in some of our uh, co workers, our old co my, my old co workers, but your current co workers, uh, and uh, see if they would be into that. Because I think we could get at least one good session out of that before uh it fell apart (laughs) yeah we probably could and i would like to do that because i agree with you that like just sitting around playing like a pen and paper rpg with your friends is a lot of fun and And, definitely worth doing i'll give a shout out an honorable mention um like pre pre dungeons and dragons games every week we do like a little like random thing as like a palate cleanser before we start the campaign and a thing that we've been doing lately i didn't know i even owned this but i do uh i have a game called drawful 2 which i think is a jackbox game 
I think I got it as some sort of humble bundle and just never installed it, but it's basically Pictionary, but you all play on your phones. So it's available on any console. Like you can get on Switch or computer or anything, but you basically all you need to do is uh, everyone needs to see the same screen. And then you go to like jackbox.tv and type in the code of the game. And then you all just like draw on your phone. And it's like a Pictionary game where you get points if you draw something that looks more similar to the thing and people guess yours on accident instead of the real one. But uh, you can play with up to eight people and it's, I think it's only like five bucks or something on Steam. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, you can, you can, we always say we're just gonna do like one game, but we end up playing like three games before we get into Dungeons and Dragons. It's a uh, Jackbox, the Jackbox technology of like using your phone as the device you play on is uh, like, it feels like magic. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people got into, uh, what is that game? That big game that everybody's playing or- Among Us? Yes, Among Us. Because can you play that on your phone? I think didn't it start as a mobile game? Am I wrong? Oh, about I don't that? know. I'm not sure. Either way, that is one of those games where it's like simple to play. So like even people who are not like into video games have gotten into it. Mm-hmm. I'm just checking my phone right now, so I'm not crazy. Yeah, it is. It's a a mobile game that you can also play on PC. But uh, yeah, neither of us played Among Us, which is why it didn't make either of our lists. <laughs> um, any games that you didn't get around to that you want to play? I mean, Watch Dogs Legion and Ghost of Tsushima are two giant ones that I need to get around to. Uh, for me, uh, Persona 5 Royal came out. Oh. Uh, I loved Persona 5 when it came out two years ago, three years, whenever that was. Um, and this is just more of that game. I didn't finish it the first time because it's so long. Um, so I find it incredibly daunting, the idea of playing a version of that that's even longer. Um, <laughs> but I, like, that's the game that, if there's ever a game in your your head that you're like, one of these days I'm going back to that game, because it, it, like, is always in your head, and you're like, I love the soundtrack to that game. Like, I, I'll, every now and then I'll think about it and be like, that was such a good game, I want to go back to it. Persona 5 is that game for me, where I'm always like, I'm going to go back and finish this game one of these days. Um, and the fact that there's now like a new version of it that I can like start over and sort of recap myself on everything that goes on. Plus I've heard it's a little bit more, uh, streamlined in some ways, uh, it improves on the experience of the original. Um, it's like the perfect excuse to get back into that game. And I've been wanting to for so long that I probably will at some point this year play it, but, uh, I did not end up playing it before we recorded this podcast, so I couldn't comment on it. But What's it on? It's on PS4 and PS5, I guess. It's a PlayStation exclusive. PSE. Yeah. Um, also, there's a little, like, I think this was a 2020 game. Have you heard of Eichenfell? That sounds familiar to me, but I don't know what it's it is. It's like a pixel art game that's sort of inspired by Earthbound. It's sort of that style RPG. Okay. Um, I, I've heard the soundtrack to it, but I have not played the game and the, the music is pretty great. And one of these days I will probably get around to trying to play that game, but it it seems pretty good. (laughs) So those are the ones I'm probably most disappointed that I didn't get to play. Um, I wish I could have played more Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh, cool thing. So I have Assassin's Creed Valhalla on Stadia. And because, like, over Christmas, um, I had an extra Stadia Premiere Edition, so I gave it to my sister, and my brother also has a Stadia Premiere Edition, so we were like, hey, we have this, like, family thing where all the movies and TV shows we own through Google Play, we can all access because if I bought something, my brother can also watch it. That mm-hmm. extends to Stadia games as well. So if I Ooh. if I have bought a game, my brother can also play it. That's crazy. So the only thing is you can't both be playing it at the same time, I think. Oh. So if you wanted to that play like a co-op game, you would both have to own it. But if I have played and finished Cyberpunk, my brother can play it and I don't he doesn't have to buy it. 
<laughs> um, which is very cool. So my sister has actually put more time into Assassin's Creed Valhalla than I have, <laughs> even though <laughs> nice. I was the one who bought it. And I sh- I'm the one that has a podcast about games. So, <laughs> so yeah, we, uh, she could probably tell you more about that game than I could at this point. But uh, You want to move on to what we're anticipating this year? Yeah, I just threw a couple things down. Um, Solar Ash is from the makers of uh oh man i'm gonna forget hyper light drifter which is a game i loved and i played oh I yeah think, three times i played it on steam and then i played it on playstation and then when it came out on switch i got it again and played it on switch because i just i love that game i love the the music which the same guy is doing the music for this new one disaster piece it's uh it's 3d it's i think uh like third person whereas the other one was just pixel art but uh, it might take place in the same universe, kind of, or like the same dimension. I'm not really sure. But uh, we don't really know a ton about it, but it looks great. Yeah, I heard that developer um, was making another game, and I was like, ooh, I would definitely check that out. Uh, knowing yeah. nothing about the game, just the fact that that developer is making another game. Also, every like two years, I get back into Minecraft. And uh, the big update that's going to happen in the spring, hopefully is the caves and cliffs updates, which is uh, something they've talked about for years. It's basically, they're rewriting the algorithm that makes caves in Minecraft, which is, a, that's a big part of Minecraft. Um, and caves are gonna be like much more interestingly uh, generated. I think, I, maybe this was in the previous update, I can't recall, but they're basically changing the way biomes work, where biomes were previously delineated in just like an X and Y, but now they're adding a Z, or wait, they're basically adding, so um, biomes can be 3D. Uh, so there's gonna be like lush caves and just like very interesting. It's not just gonna be as random anymore. So I'm super excited for whenever that comes out. I'm gonna probably get back into Minecraft for that. Breath of the Wild 2, we have not heard anything yeah, about it since I was gonna say, a, a lot of the things that I wanna talk about as far as anticipated games feel aspirational at this point, just because there's it is not gonna a great be chance the 35th that they're anniversary out of Zelda year. this year. What's that? Oh it's yeah, it's gonna be yeah, the thirty fifth yeah, yeah. anniversary of Zelda. So I mean, they're gonna do something. Yeah, they got it. Well, so the speculation is that Breath of the Wild two will come out this year, and it will be paired with like a new Switch, like a Switch Pro, which would it's be very enticing. awesome. Very enticing indeed. I would just give my Switch to my girlfriend, and she could continue to play Animal Crossing, and then I would get this one. Yeah. I, I who um, can say whether that's gonna happen though. Blood, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines Two. I played Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines when I was in high school and loved it. I love. Uh, it, I mean, it started out as a pen and paper RPG, and vampires are cool. And I think this is going to be an interesting game. Um, They've been talking about this game for of, a long time. I'm surprised it's not they out. Have. <laughs> Probably the pandemic in yeah, some way affected I'm what sure. was going on. But like most you know. aspirationally, though. And this is a real shot in the dark. Who can say? Uh, but Starfield. Maybe we'll get oh, some more about yeah. Starfield. I mean, I am super looking forward to that game. And I, yeah, definitely, if they have more to share about that game, I am all ears. Um, what about you? What uh, Do you have any on your list? God of War, probably Ragnarok. Who knows ah, what it's going to yes. be called? Um, the thing that's going to make me buy a PS5, um, yeah. or, or the thing that when I eventually do buy a PS5 that I will have bought it for. I have tried. You can't get PS5s. It just doesn't work. Even though they say, oh, their <laughs> target's dropping PS5s, get them while they're hot. You can't. It's impossible. I, yeah. Um, that game, I loved the last one, and I can't wait to see what they do with the next one. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2, like you mentioned, um, super excited for that game. Don't know if it's actually coming this year, but hopefully it does. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn Two. What was what was? I forget the actual name. The of it. Forbidden West. Forbidden West. Yeah, I I enjoyed the first one. It took me a little while to get into the story of it, just because it it felt very like a mishmash of teen dystopian fiction for the first like mm. hour or two, and I was not yeah. super into that. But like once the game like opens up and you can like start to um get more of those uh bow and arrow mechanics and the different abilities in the game and just like sort of exploring the world and uh dealing with their unique sort of like 
machine prehistoric animals. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it quite a, a bit, so I would definitely be down for playing another one. Uh, also, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I uh, like. I don't have my hopes super high that it's going to be like a great reworking of that series. It probably will just be a simple remaster, but I would love to sort of go through those games again every now and then i'll go back and play through them again and i enjoy playing them so having a version of that that is like more up to date (laughs) would be nice and they did delay it to sort of make mass effect one feel better so maybe maybe things will be better but I'll keep my expectations in check. We shall see. I'm, I'm sure we'll do extensive coverage of it when it comes out. Yeah. Um, one that I probably should be more cautiously optimistic about rather than excited is Outriders, just because it's been delayed so many times. Uh, I'm not at all interested in the story of it. I think it seemed, looks very generic and not really all that interesting, but the third person, like shooter mechanics with like abilities that basically anything that can give me like mass effect vibes i'm like Mm -hmm. let me i want i want that so uh so yeah it's kind of i don't know if it's going for like destiny style looter shooter stuff but it seems like it could be like a fun um third person like ability based combat game like every time i see footage of them like using the different crazy abilities i'm like oh this is definitely up my alley uh (laughs) so it may come out and be a complete disaster um but it may also be super fun so i i'm hoping it's super fun and not a complete disaster uh also i think Ghostwire Tokyo may come out this year. I'm curious. Uh, Yes, I'm interested in that. I'm curious uh, about that game. Don't know a lot about it, but it it sounded cool. So, uh, and then maybe the most aspirational of the things that I am anticipating: Super Mario Odyssey 2. Just just announce it this year. That's all you got to (laughs) do. Or you know, I've been going back and replaying it because. Like I said, my girlfriend played all the way through it, and uh, we picked up her game again because she never went back anywhere uh, and got extra stuff, so that's been fun to jump back into. It's so good, and I had so much fun playing that game that it feels like it's been like too long at this point for them to do a DLC drop. Uh, I would have thought that they would have done some at some point, but they didn't. So now I'm. Uh, it's insane. So now I'm hoping. Well, that just means they're doing a second game, and that's why they didn't do a DLC because they're they. You can only hope. And yeah. they just launched right into a next game. So hopefully, mm-hmm. they've got some information on that to come out this year. Maybe like an announcement plus sudden release type of thing. But that would be man. <laughs> that would be amazing. But it's also, like you said, the year of uh, Zelda, so it, it's true. it may yeah, be I'm a Zelda. Yeah, I'm very game. interested to see how much Zelda we get this year. I'm hoping for a lot. Yeah, uh, it would be all, it would be nice to see some like remasters of other Zelda games because they they did one for the the Game Boy game like a year or two ago. Yeah, and I played that and it was great. I never played. Um, the GameCube one, because I never had a GameCube, and I've heard it's a very good one. Oh, Wind Waker? Yeah. Yeah, Wind Waker. There's a lot of people that that's, like, their favorite Zelda, so I'm sure if they did, like, a remaster of that and brought it to Switch, I'm sure people would go crazy for it, so... Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. I would definitely buy it. Yeah, I would play it for sure. So, uh, either a big year for Zelda or Super Mario Odyssey 2, one or the other, or maybe both, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I'm looking forward to this year. Well, it's true. And on that note, and on that, we note, should wrap up. We should wrap up. Well, we've gone long, but it's because we had a lot of games to talk about. It's true. Follow us on StarsideCafe.com, which you can do. You can also follow us on Twitter at StarsideCafe and on Instagram, also at StarsideCafe. And uh, goodbye. Goodbye.